Back to the uh, hammer throw then. First attempt of the night. As the water has been cleared from the cage. Zielakowski of Poland, the former world champion. And uh, about 78 metres with his uh, opening attempt there. 2001 world champion. 78-34, relatively unstressed during uh, qualifying. I'll tell you what, he gives a shake of the head, but it's... Uh... For the first round, that's pretty good from Zielkowski. His best throw this year, 79 metres 14. That's 78 metres 27. That's a good start on a night, which I don't think is particularly good for the hammer throwers, but he really is shaking his head. He uh, clearly expected more than that. Here's the man, Ivan Sihon. 79-26 in qualifying means nothing to what he's produced so far. That one centimetre below the 19-year-old world record at the Belarusian Championships earlier on this year. 86-73-05 is a season's best for him. And on this day, there is quite literally nobody in this field that can come anywhere near it. Pulls out a little, though. And uh, that's 70, uh, mid-70s, uh, the red flag has gone. And an unsatisfactory start, rather following on from how it started for him yesterday as well. Well, that's right, he came through with the third qualifying throw. The first two were pretty measurable. Great. But at least, at the moment, no rain coming down. Can off off. That's good. A good opening throw from Konofalov. That will take the lead. Out towards 79 metres. A bit of a tip for you watching at home. You will be able to see a superimposed gold line. It doesn't exist on the field. There it is, you can see it. And the hammer there just landing beyond it. 78 metres 59. The Russian takes the early lead in the hammer. But uh, Bekele adamant he only wants to do the 10. Livor Schalfreiter of Slovakia. 80 85 is his season's best this year. 76 30 in qualifying, so there's uh, plenty more expected of, expected of him, rather. And uh, just over 75, 76 metres or so. Seventh in Athens back in 2004. And, uh, he's one of the coaches. He's an assistant throws coach at the uh, Southern Methodist University in the States. One of the great track and field colleges at SMU. I stand to be corrected, but I uh, seem to remember Keith Connor, the outstanding British triple jumper, went there back in the... Uh, late 70s early 80s and many have gone since him but you can see there problems with a damp circle the men's hammer continues but this man is one of the favorites in this hammer final Belarus have won this championship before Deviatoski though in the form of his life at the moment superb technique and wonderful acceleration of the 7.26 kilogram ball He reckons it's good, it's not that bad. Might get him into third place, but a few nerves out there this evening, I think. I think so, Paul, and also despite the, uh, the fabulous work that all the officials are doing, I think it's probably still a little bit damp, they're just finding their feet. Tremendous pressure through those feet there. If they just slip away, it could be very dangerous indeed. So just perhaps getting their confidence up in that slightly damp circle. Toski though, right there on the leading throw. 78-11, just short of it, back in fourth place. Clapping, the flying of the flags, and that's the reason why. Oli Pekka Karolainen, the best of season, 79-69. That would take him into the lead here. The circle's been dried. It's a good effort. Well, 
That will probably take him somewhere around about fifth or sixth place. I reckon that's somewhere round about the 76, 77 metre line. Chances are that'll be good enough for fifth place in the opening round. You can see he's struggling to keep his feet there. Even though they are mopping up the circle virtually after every throw, it's bound to be slippery. 77 metres five, that is good enough for fifth place. In the meantime, Vadim Deviatovsky through uh, 78 1 1. Well, the women's high jump is well to come tonight. Competition, and one of the names she mentioned there, Yelena Slesarenko, not here tonight. And she would have been the biggest threat to Berquist. Berquist has a real chance to win a global title, which she has done before, but she's not yet won a global title outdoors. She's twice the world indoor champion. She is the European outdoor champion. But uh, when it comes to global championships outdoors, a bronze at the Olympic Games five years ago in, Helsing in um, Sydney, I should say. She missed out on Athens last year for reasons that Tim has already explained. And uh, she's picked up bronzes at the last two World Championships, so a real opportunity for her to put that one right tonight. So we're back to the beginning. And a second row for Zerkowski of Poland. 78-27 with his first attempt. in third position behind Marcus Esser of Germany and Ilya Konofalov of Russia. That looks a little shorter than his uh, first attempt, 78-27. And, uh, well, where's it all gone wrong? <laughs> He's not happy with that. Well, he really did dominate the world for a couple of years at the start of the decade won the Olympic title in Sydney, then the following year won the world title in Edmonton. In terms of the big ones ever since, well, he even failed to make the final at the Olympic Games last year. Well, if you take into account they're going to have to throw over 80 metres in order to get into the medal frame, then he's not managed it once so far this year. 79-14 is his uh, season's best. Well, if he's having a few problems, then so too is this guy. He uh, got it right in the end yesterday, but it was in the end. And uh, if, uh, if body language tells you something, there's almost a feel of resignation. He slopes forward even, see hop into the cage. No throw with his first attempt. 79-26 was his qualifying mark. Well, again, nothing too impressive. Right on the uh, line of 75 metres, and a red flag again. Well, he's finding himself in exactly the same position he did in the qualifying competition. He has one more throw, and at the very minimum, he's going to have to throw 76.06 at least to get into the top eight to assure himself three more throws. So one of the hottest hottest favourites at these championships is on the on the verge of going out. Well, we've already had one in the, the power events, if you'd like to call them that, John Godina, on the first morning of competition. Now, this is the current leader with an opening throw, 78-59, Ilya Konovalov of Russia. Fifth in Atlanta in 1996, fifth in Sydney in 2000, didn't qualify in 2004. it a bit and he's, uh, he's around 76 metres just over so again he's not going to bypass his first throw 78 59 with that and 
knew instantly as soon as that left his hand that that wasn't going to be good enough well perhaps a little further up than that actually 70s yeah 76 21 then Athletes for the 10,000 metres are beginning to assemble on the track. And that is the next major event on the track. And this is Marcus Esser. Still a youngster, comparatively speaking, in this event. He's only 25, is Esser. Best of season of 79.92. He opened with 78.57, currently lying in second place. And on a night like tonight, he likes it. He likes it. Oh, it's a big one. Just short of 80 metres. And I was saying, on a night like tonight, get a big one out there early, and it may prove decisive, because the rain is holding off now, but for how much longer? It's been dry, and I'll put that in inverted commas, for somewhere in the region now of about 40 minutes. The longest dry spell we've had all day. You can't help but think that the next rain shower is not too far away. Essa, 79 metres 11, moves into the lead. He's got a 52 centimetre advantage. So, the next event on the track, the final of the men's 10,000 metres. Just reflect on that throw by Marcus Esser. It's not an earth-shattering distance. There are plenty of guys in here capable of throwing further. But Marcus Esser at the moment has coped with the conditions and the championship pressure that we talk about all the time. Only 73-44 for Piskanov, but only halfway through the second round. This is the Hungarian in the second round, Christian Paz of Hungary. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I thought he'd really lost it there. He was very lucky not to land on his back. Very, very slippery underfoot. You've got to be very skillful to handle these conditions. And that will be a real knock in the confidence of this 23-year-old Hungarian, former world youth champion. Just watch his feet there. That was potentially dangerous. Thank goodness he's OK. Obviously a foul. He stays in sixth place. Well, the hammer throw into the second round. And here is Vadim Deviatovsky seeing his countryman Ivan Sikon in all sorts of trouble, struggling to get through to the final three throws. What can Deviatovsky do about this? Marcus Esser continues to lead, 79 metres 11. We're looking for that first throw beyond 80. Oh, I think we've got it. Deviatovsky. Well, a man with relatively little experience at this level who picked up a World Junior Silver medal, but that's going back nine years ago. But he's crept up there behind his countrymen, ranked number four in the world this year. And that out to 80 metres 45 for the ball time. Ivan Sikan. He's thrown 86 metres 73 this year, just a centimetre of a world record, which has stood for almost two decades. And now he's facing elimination after just three throws. He needs to go beyond 76 metres and five. Oh, he's done it. Oh, he's done it, and he's done it in grand style. Well, he just slipped into the final with his third throw in qualifying. He's living very, very dangerously, but now Belarus have one and two. The top two men in the world, Sikan and Deviatovsky, are in one and two. And Sikan now leads 80 metres 97. He really has got out of jail. Well, here is the man who currently lies second in the hammer. He led for almost a round. Dev Yatovsky, ranked number two in the world this year, the fourth longest of all time.
We're now to 80 metres and 45 in the second round. Only to see Ivan Sikan go beyond him at the start of the third round. There you can see it, the former Olympic champion, Simon Zielkowski, the pole, lying in third place. Devyatovsky looking for something over 80 metres again. Oh, it's good! And that's taken the lead again. It's a joust, a duel between the Belarusians. How this nation tend to get it right when they come to the big championships. The Belarusian throwers really are very special indeed. And these two, perhaps the best of them. 82 metres 60. Devyatovsky takes the lead. Sikhan is now second. Lassie Byrne, an interested spectator of this 10,000... ...is 97. Incredible speed and great balance as well, and this is big. Oh, well over the 80-metre line. This guy is almost perfect in terms of technique and the physical equipment required to throw the hammer a long way. He's very strong, sits very low. You can see that by the bend in his legs and a massive strength and power required to lift the hammer on the delivery. That is big, it gets a white flag, and it has taken the lead in this hammer final. 82 metres 60, so his teammate and everybody else has to hit back at a massive distance. Well, certainly this guy, more about Kajalain and... ...might yet uh, prove that he is the best in the world in the absence of Hisham El Garouj, who was an interested spectator of proceedings here in the Olympic Stadium a couple of nights ago. Now, Zielkowski in the uh, hammer, the Olympic champion from Poland. In third place at the moment, this is his fourth round effort, his best, 79-35, coming uh, in round three. He opened with a very, very strong 78-27 in round one. Looking for that 80 metre mark. But that's not it. The lead held by Devyatovsky. His second and third round efforts absolutely massive and beyond anything this man, Zielkowski, has attained yet. The man from Belarus, 80 metres 45 in round two, a monstrous 82 60 in the second round to our lead his compatriot Tikon, who's 80 97 in round three, is his only valid effort so far. 77.35 there is uh, no improvement for the pole well there is the world number one hasn't looked much like one for all but two throws over the course of the last few days two poor efforts in qualifying then he came through with a third he started with two no throws tonight and on, uh, on the verge of elimination popped out an 80 metres 97 throw, now finds himself in second place, needs to find 82 metres 61 to go into the lead. Oh, it's a big one! He's done it! Well, what a joust this is between the two Belarusians. Anything you can do, I can do that just that little bit better. And on a wet night when... Uh, I don't mind admitting, I thought we might see something of a damp squib when it came to the hammer competition. It really is a desperate night for hammer throwing, any rotational thrower. But we're seeing a minor classic here, 83 metres, 89. Well, in fact, I think they call it a minor classic, we'll actually be understating it, that's a championship record. It's very special on a dreadful night. It is indeed, yes, but... Uh... Clearly the job was there to be done. David Toski had uh, taken the lead in round three with 82-60. And he is next to throw. How can he respond? How can he meet the challenge? 28-year-old hasn't uh, taken any major medals since the World Junior Silver all of nine years ago. Was fourth last year 
in Athens. Already looks like he's heading for at least one place better than that here. He lies in second place now. He's going to need very nearly a lifetime best. He's uh, Vadim Deviatoski to regain the lead from his compatriot. So, here he goes. Round four. Oh, no! Indicating that he slipped there, but I wonder if the uh, pressure has got to him. It's actually not raining in the arena, so that circle isn't getting any wetter as the minutes click by at the moment. The final, and it's the big man, Ivan Tikon, still in the lead with that fourth round monster, 83 metres, 89. No change to the first three places. Devitovsky second, Zielkowski in third. Oh, and he stepped forward on that one. His penultimate effort is uh, lost there. Such is the effort. As Martin said, the circle is damp, difficult control, but that championship record may yet prove to be enough. So often, though, Dunlitz forgets in the throws, the really big efforts do come in the final round. It's the last gasp saloon now for the rest of them. Devyatoski has uh, two more throws, but uh, the other six have uh, just one effort left. Well, we'll bring you news of that uh, 1,500 metres in a couple of moments' time, but among those run out of it, Mady Bala. Would you believe it? Bala is out. Well, let's go down now to trackside. We're going to hear from the 10,000-metre champion, Kenanisa Bekele. I've gone through without any doubt at all. The winning time, 3.34.69. Well, here is Simon Zielkowski, former Olympic champion. Currently lying in third place. Oh, and he's thrown it into the side netting. And that is final effort of the night. But Zielkowski will leave this competition with a bronze medal. It's been a pretty good night for him. And the two athletes from Belarus guaranteed silver and bronze, but uh, exactly who will receive which colour is yet to be decided. Well, Ivan Tikon then, in the lead. He's the penultimate thrower. 83-89 in round four has given him pole position. He's going to have to sit and watch his compatriot Devyatoski take the last throw of the night, who might yet deny him the gold and swap their positions round, but this one looks useful as well. It is indeed, well beyond 80 metres, around 81 and a half, maybe 82 metres. No improvement though, 83-89, he achieved in round four, is a new championship record. And Tikon will have yet a couple more minutes before those celebrations can start, or will they? Vadim Devyatoski, his compatriot, ironically, the 28-year-old, just lies between him and the world title. Of course, it would be a retention of the title for the 29-year-old Olympic silver medalist last year. Coached by one Sergei Litvinov, the third longest thrower in history. Indeed, uh, on the 3rd of July, Tikon went just a few centimetres further than uh, Litvinov, his coach. They lie second and third, the pairing on the all-time list behind uh, Yuri Sedik's uh, world record of 86-74, which was just one centimetre beyond Tikon's uh, new personal best this year. Well, here is Vadim Deviatovsky, the final throw of the competition. It's been a seesaw night between the Belarusians. Can there be one final rock in the favour of the youngster? Just 28, which is relatively young in this Mature man's event. He needs beyond 83-89. Oh, it's good. I suspect it's not good enough, though. A big, big throw there from Deviatovsky. Well, it may well be an improvement on his 82 meters 60, but I don't think it's enough to take Sikan. 
Well, there's a certain hush around the stadium. You've got to say that. Here it comes. 82 metres 19. So, the world number one is the champion. Deviatoski, on a marvellous night, has to make do with a silver medal. One, two for Belarus, though. There's a hug to end all hugs. You wouldn't want to be sandwiched between that, would you? <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, he lived dangerously, did the champion. Only just squeezed through into the final with his third and final attempt. He looked like being eliminated midway through this competition when he started off with two no throws. And then he pulled one out to 80 metres, 97. Since then, he's lost. So Ivan Tikon confirmed then as the world champion. Twice world champion now in the men's hammer with that uh, championship record throw in round four. Belarus, of course, have an Olympic champion in the 100 metres for women later on this evening. That race at 9.35 local time, 7.35 in the uh, UK for British Eurosport viewers. But uh, Nestorenko doesn't look to me like she's in the sort of form to... Uh, for Belarus, they really do get it right, don't they, with the uh, Belarusian throwers. Almost every time we've got a global championship, the Belarusians out there getting it right. One-two for them. Bronze for Poland. 